I've mentioned that I uh, watched a couple of these True Detectives back to back, which means I took a week off because I have so many things I'm recording right. So I took the time off I need, and uh, in that time during the downtime in between like you know recordings, I actually had time to sit down and think about this show. You know, usually while I'm cooking or cleaning, my mind goes to the mystery shows. Those are the ones I think about the most. You know, there's not much to think about community in between episodes. You know, but this this there's mysteries to unravel here. And uh, now. If you're not a writer, I mean, I think only writers are going to get their dick hard about what I'm about to say. But, you know, just bear with me if you're not a writer. Or maybe if you've had the misfortune to study literature in, in college. <laughs> Jesus. In either case, you know what an unreliable narrator is. Uh, an unreliable narrator is when we usually we're, the, the, the character is talking directly to us. Like, you know, in the novel, you find, you know, there's like at the beginning of the novel, somebody finds a uh, diary, you know. And then they read the diary, and the diary is the story of the of the novel, right? And then at the end, maybe we go back to the character who found the diary, and they have some thoughts or some shit. But that's typically how it works. But so you're reading the diary, and then you realize at the end of the diary, like, wait, this motherfucker's been lying to us. He wasn't telling the truth about some shit. He was leaving some shit out, or just straight out lying to our fucking face. Unreliable ass motherfucker. That's an unreliable narrator. So many examples. Angel Heart is a great unreliable narrator story, but there's so many examples. You know, it turns out at the end of the story that they're the killer all along. They've been investigating the murders. Turns out they're the fucking killer because they left out some crucial information. Like they were fucking killing people. You know? Angel Heart. Spoiler alert. So that's a pretty standard thing. You know, you, you got to watch the unreliable narrators. Like if we're following a protagonist. It's it's more tricky in, in movies because in movies you're not really be telling it from a point of view. It's not like you say, and I did this, and I did that. So what they have to do in movies, a lot of times they'll just cut right before they show him, like, killing the motherfucker. You know, again, hey, Jordan. You know, he'll be standing there with somebody, and then they cut to a new scene, and then people come back later to that room, and they find a the person murdered. What we don't see is right right after they cut, he pulls out the knife, and he starts whacking, right? But we don't see that because they cut it. But still, that, that's about the best you can do. It really, like, you, you have to really be vibing with the movie to follow it, like... Because it, otherwise it just feels like the filmmaker's lying to you. It doesn't feel like the protagonist is lying to you. Because it should, prose is just different. Novels are different. When novels are, novels are talking directly to us, you're reading it. Either it's... Uh, I'll tell you a great example. Usual Suspects. I'm not going to say anything else. That's much bigger spoiler than Angel Heart. Nobody gives a shit about Angel Heart. But I will say the, the format of Usual Suspects is you have a character telling you a story. Then you can be an unreliable narrator. You have to, like, that's when it really works in, in movie form or TV form is when a character is telling us the story. Okay, now you can be an unreliable neighbor. It doesn't really work if we're just following a protagonist along. You know, then it's the filmmaker's line to us, so like I said. So um, so it's worked to good effect or lesser effect depending on the format and how they present it you know, and how it works. What I just realized is we have two opportunities here for unreliable neighbors that, that I didn't even fucking acknowledge, right? We have Cole being interviewed, and we have Martin being interviewed. And and through their interviews, we go into their interview, and then we go back to the flashbacks. Now, what's really fucking clever about this, first of all, okay, now either one of them could be lying to us, the audience, about what happened. Okay? So those are two opportunities to be unreliable narrators. They could both be unreliable narrators, or maybe just one of them is an unreliable narrator, and the other one isn't. Okay? But what it, what's really fucking clever, what they what's really interesting about what they did here is they show us that these two characters are lying to the police because they're talking to the police. I think it's easy to forget that. We think they're talking to us, the audience. No, they're talking to the police. So they we see them lie to the police because they'll say something and then they contradict it with, with what they're showing on film. With the actual flashbacks, they will contradict it. Okay? So... We feel like they're on our side because they're lying to the cops, but then they're showing us the reality with their flashbacks, right? That's not necessarily true. They could be lying. They could be leaving shit out of the flashbacks that it turns out later is what happened, right? Now, I don't think they're going to show us something in the flashback that is not true, but they could leave something out, some crucial piece of information in a flashback to be revealed later that would change the whole concept or like change the whole entire perception of what's going on. You know what I'm saying? But here's another thing that I realized when I, during this break off. I was like, wait a minute. They have every reason to lie to the cops. And it, there's, like I said, we've seen them lie. But what else have they lied to the cops about that we didn't see? 
like literally lied to the cops. And we just, we never saw any photographic evidence either way in the flashbacks. Because if if Cole or Martin or both of them think that the cops are involved, probably more Cole than Martin because Cole is a fucking tinfoil, uh, you know, conspiracy theorist, right? He's the Preston Jacobs of this show, right? If he believes that the cops are involved in some kind of cover-up, which is, seems to be what they're implying here with everything that's going on. they seem It seems to be like, because, you know, you had a dude commit suicide in a fucking police station. Somebody with power is involved here. I know he got a phone call, but they never traced back the phone call. Um, there's just, I mean, clearly, like, there's enough reason to believe that somebody in the police is involved. Maybe somebody really high up who can give orders that people have to follow, right? Rather than just some rogue cop who happens to be on duty that day. Yeah, that's a big difference. If Cole believes that, he's not going to tell these police shit that are interviewing him. They could either be directly involved or they could just be working, you know, uh, useful idiots working for the person who's involved. Either way, somebody's going to be watching this interview tape later. So I think Martin and or Cole are saying shit to provoke the people who are going to watch that interview tape later. That's what I think is going on here. You know, uh, and I didn't realize I was lost in the sauce just in the daily grind of like watching these episodes. I had to take a step back. I'm glad I took this couple weeks off to actually analyze this shit and think about it. I think that's clearly what's going on here. And what they really do is they slip this in here because they, they, they establish trust with us, the audience, by lying to the cops, but they're not lying to us. They'll lie to the cops and they show the flashback. Okay, we can trust what they're saying to us because we trust the flashbacks. But what flashbacks are they not showing to us? That could contradict other shit they've said that we think they may be telling the truth about, right? One more thing about this. That, that, that's mentioned Preston Jacobs. He said something that was so fucking profound. I've never really thought about it. But he was talking about the whole purpose of human language that evolved. The way human language evolved 10,000 years ago to now. The entire purpose of us being able to talk, of us being able to say words and understand words, is to communicate information. Accurate information that's the entire purpose of fucking language the purpose of language is not to trick people if that was the case then we would have a language where we could talk to lions and bears and shit that's trying to kill us you know what i'm saying if we were to like if we could lie to the lion and say hey man if you eat me you're gonna die because i'm poison and the lion's like oh shit man damn dog all right i'll, I'll back up the bear can be talking about, hey, you know, you can tell the bear, look, man, this time is way more delicious than I am. It's right there. You can just pull it right out of the fucking water. You don't want me. Yeah, and you can be lying. Maybe that's same in this garbage, right? You could lie to the bear and the bear like, oh, okay. Well, I guess I'll go over and get the salmon then. That's my best bear accent I can come up with. So if, if, it was, if the purpose of human language was to be able to lie to people, then... There would be an evolutionary need for it, and there's not. Like, because we never learned how to talk to lions and bears. We only learned how to talk to each other. So, and the language about cooperating, they, they believed, scientists believe the reason we came up with language in the first place was we had to we had to cooperate with these other 17 people to take down this fucking woolly mammoth. And we had to be able to talk to each other to do that. Hand signals ain't enough. It probably started out with hand signals, but then there would be a grunt, and a grunt would mean this, and then there would be, well, let's add some more grunts, and we can have a more complicated plan. Because it's a tricky maneuver to take down a woolly fucking mammoth. You guys all need to be on the same page. You can't be going off to the left when you're supposed to be going to the right, man. You, you need to listen to the grunts, motherfucker. So that's what language was. The purpose of language was to be able to communicate accurate information. It's hardwired into our DNA. That's why we automatically believe people. We're supposed to automatically believe people when they sell us something. That's the entire fucking purpose of language. We're supposed to believe each other when we say shit. So people who lie are corrupting the entire fucking basic as intended purpose of language. They're distorted. You know, we are hardwired to believe shit that were set, that's said to us. We have to train our minds to not automatically believe everything that's said to us. And so it's a corruption. It's a horrible fucking, it's a perversion that we have to do this because we've evolved into these fucking mendacious assholes who fucking lie to each other. You know, we've evolved it. So basically we've, per we've, we've perverted the entire fucking purpose of language by lying to each other so goddamn much. But it is what it is. That's the world we live in. So we actually have to, each one of us individually through the course of our life, have to train ourselves to just not automatically believe what's told to us. And some people are more successful at training themselves than others. But getting back to this, that's what makes 
the unreliable narrator so powerful. That's what makes what, what you can do with writing and with fiction and, and filmmaking. You can trick the audience because the audience is, is they're hardwired. Not only what I was talking about, the evolution of language, but also hardwired just in filmmaking in general. Usually filmmakers are going to be straight. What, they, what you see is what you get. So when you don't, when what you see is what you, is not what you get, when the filmmaker is lying to the audience, that can be very fucking effective. Because it's like a double, it's a double way. First, the right is that evolutionally we're supposed to believe what we're told because that's purpose of language. And the left is most of the time what you see is what you get. So these lying ass, unreliable narrator ass filmmakers be, bam, I just got your ass. I got you with this combo. And then we're laying on the floor like, God damn, what the fuck just happened? That's what this that's what this show is doing to us. You know? And they did and like I said, the extra sauce on top of everything I just said was the fact that they're like, hey, I'm your friend. I just told you about this lie I told these motherfuckers. I'm lying to them. I'm not lying to you. I'm lying to these fucking cops. We can't trust these cops. But I'd never lie to you. This is me petting the audience. I'd never lie to you. It's okay. See? That's what, you know, that's what they've done to us is they've lulled us into false insecurity by showing us a few of the lies they told to the cops. So now we think we can trust them. Man, I'm on to these motherfuckers. I ain't trusted shit either one of these motherfuckers says. Like I said, more Cole probably, but I wouldn't be surprised if fucking Martin. Martin sure as fuck lies himself a lot. I would not be surprised one fucking bit if he also lies to us. So, 